Mrs. Brittany Spears is in hospital with pneumonia. The physician has prescribed intravenous antibiotics and a 1,000 milliliter NACL 0.9% infusion at a flow rate of 80 millimeters an hour. To prevent administrative errors, the nurse must find out if the user has allergies, medical antecedents, and any other information that may affect the planned procedure. The nurse must follow the seven rights of use when preparing the medication. She needs to make sure she has the right product, the right time, the right dosage, the right user, the right administration route, the right recording, and the right supervision. The concordance check is done with a compatibility table by which she can ensure that the IV fluid is compatible with the primary intravenous infusion. She collects the IV fluid bag that corresponds to the medical prescription, the proper tubing for the administration method or device, a salute stand or volumetric infusion pump, along with self-adhesive labels, one for the salute and one for the tubing. The nurse opens the IV package and makes sure the solution is clear with no deposits and checks the expiry date. If the fluid quantity is below the expected value, the bag may have a leak and must be disposed of and replaced. The same applies if the fluid contains deposits, is cloudy or expired, as the properties of the solution may be altered. To use the gravity method, the nurse hangs the IV fluid bag on the drip feed stand. Preserving sterility is an important step in order to prevent potential contamination when preparing an infusion. The nurse opens the tubing package, being careful to keep both ends sterile. If in doubt, the nurse should open a new tubing package. The nurse also makes sure the flow rate regulator is turned off before piercing the IV bag. To keep the solution from entering the tubing too fast, which would generate a great amount of air bubbles. The cover preserves the sterility of the IV bag. When the nurse removes it, she must avoid any direct contact with the insertion site to prevent potential contamination. When adjoining the perforator and insertion site, the nurse must make sure to maintain sterile conditions to avoid contaminating the solution. The nurse compresses the drip chamber and releases it in order to fill it to the fill line, about two-thirds of the way. Releasing the pressure creates a suction effect, allowing the drip chamber to fill with fluid. The drip chamber should not be completely filled, therefore an eye must be kept on the drip opening, which will later be used to regulate the infusion flow rate. If the chamber is too full, the nurse must pinch the tube under the chamber, turn the IV bag over, and compress the drip chamber. Once the chamber has been emptied, the nurse returns the IV bag to its initial position on the drip feed stand. The sterility of the end cap must be preserved at all times since it will be put back in place once the tubing has been primed. The nurse slowly opens the slide clamp. A slow flow rate prevents turbulence and air bubbles from being generated during the procedure. Air bubbles in the tubing could end up being injected into the user which could cause an embolism. The nurse must make sure the tubing Y connectors are completely free of air bubbles. If the Y connectors still contain air bubbles, there is a risk of injecting air into the user's veins during the infusion. She places the protective end cap on the tubing or a sterile needle if the end cap has been contaminated. The nurse checks for air bubbles in the tubing to make sure there is no air remaining in it. The nurse fills in two self-adhesive identification labels with the installation time and date, which helps in planning the infusion and tubing replacement schedule.